On the exam, I want to talk about the new question types you're going to see. Everyone is really worried about these question types, all right? And I'm going to talk to you uh, coming up about pass rates because based on the pass rates, since these new questions have been out, no one really has to worry. These questions are not the bad guy unless you let them be in your head. This is the big thing I want to tell you, the pass rates. Now, in 2023, the EMT pass rate was 67%. AEMT was 58%. Paramedic was 71%. Now, let's look at the entire year of 2024. EMT is up, 67 to 69. AEMT is up, and AEMT is tough. I really don't think that people are coming out of the EMT class with the pathophysiology and the knowledge they need. They're not going into AEMT ready, and the AEMT classes aren't giving the depth that's necessary. Paramedic in 2024, 73%. But I diced these numbers since the new items came out July 1. EMT, as of yesterday, 74%, up 7% from 2023. AEMT from 2023 is up 5%, and paramedic is up 2% from 2023, and it's held steady since the new questions have come out. This is why I don't think that we're in any trouble. Now, the National Registry said this, and I was a little skeptical. I will admit it. But the numbers now, after they've been out, from July 1 now into December, almost six months, things are looking good. I don't want you to freak out. So here's the question types. Multiple response. You generally will get to choose two of five or three of six. There generally won't be more than six choices and there's usually three wrong answers. So two of five, three of six. And I'll show you examples of all of these. Then there's option boxes, they're check boxes. You may have to categorize or sort based on the things that you see on your screen, clicking column A, column B, maybe column C, to put these things in the right categories. I'll show you those. You can drag and drop, right? And these, this is functionality that you use anyways. Take an answer that you want and you drag it into the right box, into the right category. And then finally, there's sequencing and build lists. On the left side of your screen, you'll have a list of four, five, maybe six things, and you've got to drag them over to the right category. Now, you may also have to put them in order. So let's go through and look at some of the questions that you're going to see, and we're going to start with the drag and drop question. Now, let's take a look at this. If you're on a phone, I just want to make sure you can see this. I'm going to read, it. I'm going to read the question to you. You're called for an unresponsive patient. You arrive to find a 20-year-old who is alert and oriented. Bystander said the patient was unresponsive for a short time and they came too quickly. They report feeling like everything suddenly got fuzzy. And the vital signs, pulse of 88, respiratory to 14, 110 over 72, setting at 97. Well, he doesn't seem too bad right now. This is somebody who was unresponsive when they called and suddenly got better. Well. I need to pick a cause and I need to pick a treatment. So I look at those causes and I'm like, seizure, hmm, unresponsive for a short time, came too quickly. Well, seizures have postictal periods. This is the way I want you to think. And nobody talked about seizure activity. Hypoglycemia, I really don't think they would come to unless they got some sugar. Syncopal episode, what's definition of syncopal episode? Somebody passes out and gets better quickly. Their vital signs are good, things got fuzzy. So I would take syncopal episode and I would drag that over to the most probable cause. Then I say, what's my treatment for that? Oxygen. Well, he's setting at 90, they're setting at 97. And by the way, the National Registry doesn't do he or she anymore. It's all they and their. Administer oxygen, SATs are 97. Transport. And that makes more sense. Glucose. I don't think it's hypoglycemia. What are the correct answers here? Syncopal episode and transport. All right. Frank put a message in the chat. Um, trying to pass the National Registry. Didn't struggle during class, but now, now is challenged. And the scenarios are the question. And the AEMTs and paramedics are going to get scenarios. I think the answer is to think of those as a call. Take your time 
and go back to the information that you need um, for that. So, and I'm going to go through a lot of these question types are going to help, but a lot of it comes down to not being distracted and really reading. All right, here's sequencing. Place the following structures of the heart in the order the blood flows through them. Holy cow. This is, you know, remembering all those valves, right? TPMA. So I'm looking at these pulmonary artery, pulmonary vein, mitral valve, tricuspid, left ventricle. Well, looks like the first thing we see is tricuspid, then the mitral valve. We go to the lungs through the pulmonary artery, comes back to the pulmonary vein, and then we'll go into the left ventricle. These aren't in order, and that makes it challenging. So you got to figure out what the first thing you see on your screen is, tricuspid valve, then the, oh no, tricuspid valve, then it's a pulmonic valve. All right, hang on. Tricuspid valve, see I was on there, listen to me. Tricuspid valve, pulmonary artery, pulmonary vein, mitral valve, then left ventricle. All right, because the mitral valve is between the left uh, atrium and the left ventricle. And then you would drag those over to the, put them in the order that blood flows. And that's called sequencing. Now here's the option boxes. A patient with a history of insulin-dependent diabetes hasn't felt well for several days. They become increasingly lethargic and they recently wet the bed. Relatives report poor compliance with medications. Based on your differential diagnosis from what you've seen, sort the list of signs and symptoms into most likely and least likely. Well, insulin-dependent diabetes hasn't felt well for several days. That's a gradual onset. This, again, this is how I want you to think about it. Increasingly lethargic, but again, it's over time, recently wet the bed. That's the National Registry trying to tell you polyuria, right? They wet the bed, excessive urination, that goes with hyperglycemia, right? Haven't felt well, and there's been poor compliance with medication. So they're not taking their insulin. The sugar is building up in their system. I think this patient is hyperglycemic based on all those things. Again, do you see what I say? You've got enough information, but it's they don't hit you over the head with it. So hunger. Well, yeah, I'd expect hunger. That's most likely. And I'd expect thirst. That's most likely. Remember polyuria, polydipsia, polyphagia. All right, blood glucose of 56. That's not likely. That's hypoglycemia. Moist skin. That's hypoglycemia too. My uh, patients who are hyperglycemic are sometimes dehydrated. Muscle tremors. Well, that's also something that occurs um, with hypoglycemia. But fruity breath odor. Type 1 diabetic, DKA, absolutely. My most likely are hunger, thirst, and a fruity breath odor, my least likely are the ones that say it's hypoglycemia, 56 for the blood glucose, moist skin, and muscle tremors. So I'm showing you these questions, what they're going to look like on your screen, but I'm also showing you um, the thinking that I want you to do when you put these questions out there. All right, when you get these, I want you to think about them just like that. Multiple response. Which three of the following are required to prove negligence against an EMS provider? Now you could look at this a couple of different ways. The first is you could say to yourself, oh, I memorized this, right? Duty to act, breach of that duty, harm to the patient, proximate cause. Okay, I'm a nerd. I know those things off the top of my head. I've also taught for many, many years. So I know what those things are. Now, the other way to look at this is look at these five choices and look at each one as a true-false question. Which three of the following are required to prove negligence? Proximate cause. That one's true. EMS provider had a duty to act. Yeah, duty to act was one of the ones I remembered. Intent. No, no, you could still be negligent if it was an accident. You don't have to intentionally hurt someone. Harm was caused to the patient. Well, yeah, you have to have harm, um, you know, for the tort, for the lawsuit to prove negligence. Significant monetary loss. Which three? I got to pick three. 
I'm going to, are required. Oh, so significant monetary loss. Okay, that's possible. But what if it's injury? What if there's no monetary loss? So proximate cause, duty to act, and harm was caused to the patient. Click, 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 and then move on. All right. Any questions, feel free to throw those uh, into the chat. But those are the questions that everyone is going to see. Now for the AEMTs and paramedics that are out here. The clinical judgment scenarios are different. But what I have heard from people that have come out of the exam, they say they would rather have a clinical judgment scenario than have 12 random challenging national registry questions. Clinical judgment scenarios take you through a call before you get to the scene, on scene, and post scene. Just like you do a call. People generally like these more. Now, I, and I know some of our didn't said, you know, I think those things are struggling with the scenarios. It depends on how many scenarios you get. Let's say that you get two or three scenarios. Each one is 10 questions, all right? You're going to get somewhere between, on paramedic, between 110 and 150 questions. So in that, if you got three scenarios, and assuming they all count and one wasn't a pilot, I'm not sure that's enough to put you over the edge. People are making these things the bad guys. In my experience, people like them more because they make sense with the way that we think. It's an evolving scenario. There's significant detail that's provided uh, in that. And um, I think that's uh, I think that's it. Eight to twelve questions on this scenario spread over that in route, scene, and post scene. 